Hello, this is Mr. Fleming, and we are going to begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thine womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. This project is my R34 class, and we just finished up um, anthropomorphic images, and we'll make a display of those, and we're ready for a new project. And what I'd like our students to do is to look into art history and to find an artist that has influenced them and try to reproduce their work. This is a very old technique um, in which students look at master's work and they try to reproduce them. I would suggest you find a style of art that you like. And I'm going to talk about one style which I find most people find very engaging, which is the Impressionist. The Impressionists were a movement in the late 19th century, and it involved people going out into nature and drawing their own environments, as opposed to being in a studio and working on pieces specifically for the state or for the church. Now, this came about for many reasons. One is technology. Um, photography had been invented this by this point. It had been invented about, I think, 1850 was the first area type. And the idea of having to paint realistically was no longer a necessity. Another aspect of this was paints. Paints became manufactured in a way they had never done before. Um, before the manufacturing of paints by industry, people needed to grind their own pigments, find their emulsifiers, and really do everything from scratch. And when you said a studio, like Rubens, for instance, you had many different craftsmen creating canvases, paints, pigments, it was a very involved. By Van Gogh's time, paints were in tubes and they were relatively inexpensive, not for him, but for most people, middle, middle class anyway. So this all brought about the Impressionist. But the big thing for me was the personal response to an environment and looking to go to that environment and experience the environment as opposed to being in a studio and just working from studies and really your own imagination. Um, it was a very popular style um, right after <laughs> um, it was lambasted in the press as being meaningless and useless and very um, low brow art, but I won't go in there. So what I first did is I went to the library and I got some books and I really suggest this. You can't really do it on the internet. I suppose if you have a really great screen and you're projecting high images, you can get nice images. But I actually think light radiating to your eyes is a little bit different than reflective light. And for me, looking through several plates and my eyes able to linger comfortably onto an image, I think is much more important than um, having a computer image anyway. That's where I'm going with this. But you can see here in this particular photograph, the um, use of photography as a source. And this was, again, 1888. And this is all about Impressionist work. And you can see the varying styles here. And I have different artists, including um, Claude Monet. And this is very much a Claude Monet right here. And that's what we're talking about. Now, I went to the Impressionist. I like Claude Monet. So I went out and I found another book, Monet's Nature. And Monet was very, very famous for using um, nature as his inspiration. And he spent many years studying it. And I'm looking at this plate. Now, these books give me a richness that's just not going to happen looking into a phone or a laptop. Um, even if you project it onto a big TV screen, I think it would be more important to have plates like this. But this is very typical of Monet. What he would do is look at an object, the same object, different seasons and different times of year, and try to render the light as it was at that particular moment. And that's what I try to do back here. And you can see here, here we have a reproduction of Monet's haystacks. We have wintertime with direct sunlight. We have summertime with sunset light. You can see that the purple back there. We have spring with the flowers and the trees and the deep, deep greens. And then the autumn's orange and yellow and a sunrise sky. It's, this is what I'm looking for. Now, these pieces are very large for the camera's sake, not that I want pieces quite this big. I do not think they should be any smaller than 8 inches by 10 inches. And if you're going to do them that small, I think you should do more in number. If you're doing a larger piece, I think 3 is plenty. So if you do more than um, 8 inches by 10 inches, 
then you can reduce it to three pieces. If you go to eight inches by 10 inches, I think four pieces. I'm looking for four pieces in a style like pop art. And you could do um, Rothgau, you could do Liechtenstein, you can do Andy Warhol, or one particular artist like Andy Warhol. Um, so you have both options. You can do pop art or one artist in pop art, or you can do the Rococo and one artist in the Rococo. But I'm looking for you to really look at a style and art of an artist that moves you, that inspires you, and it takes some time to reproduce it. So our first order of business is to choose a style and then choose an artist, and then we will go from there. When I say that, I am looking for drawings in your sketchbooks in which you are reproducing some of these images, including color studies. Um, I love black and white. I love pencil. They're great. But I find a lot of our students are shying away from using color. Let's look at the Impressionist if you don't have any ideas, because I think they're worth looking at. Yes, I think they are a little pedestrian. They have the most reproduced art of all the art styles, but that's for a reason. It really it hits home. And most people, I certainly do, enjoy drawing from nature. There's nothing I enjoy more than sitting back outside with a sketchbook and just drawing what I see. So that's the next project, R34 AP, whoever else is listening here out there in uh, YouTube land. So make art, because art won't make itself, and check out the LMS, and we'll see you in class. Bye-bye.